everybody. Rich back with Kesteva Engineering, and today we have another midweek mini for you. I know right around the corner this might be the last video before the uh, fall PE exam, so everyone who's been tagging along has joined the team, has been studying. Do the little things at the end here. Don't over cram. Just do the best you can with the knowledge that you have now. It's as simple as that. You can't, you can't smash in a bunch of information right at the end and expect that you're going to do phenomenally. So just don't panic. You got this. You've been following along with the problems. You've been talking with the team. You've been finding those little tips and tricks and all of your codes. You definitely have this. So good luck to everybody out there. And when you are done, you know, uh, report back to the team. Don't forget about Team Kestava. Um, the rest of the people on this team that uh, have not taken the PE yet, you know, give them that knowledge. Let them know what you found out, what you thought was hard, what you thought was easy, things that you didn't expect. So I can't remember everything about the exam. So it's up to the rest of you to tell everyone else that's still here studying. Uh, so today, let's knock one out. The beam shown carries a uniform eccentric load of 20 kips per foot. The span is 20 feet, and the beam is fully restrained at each end. What is the maximum torsional moment on the beam? Torsional moment, that's what we're looking for. Torsion is kind of its own animal, um, but it is, it, 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 does, it is essentially a moment. It has the same units. Um, it's, it's, it's a force times a length. And in this problem, it's actually a lot simpler than you might think. So where torsion can get funky is in the design of uh, an element. So whether that's wood or steel or concrete, each building material is very, very unique for torsion. And the properties of each totally act differently. And the equations are all different. So when torsion can get more complicated, it's when you're actually asked to design an element for torsional forces. But in this case, although we're given a, you know, a graphic showing a steel wide flange, we're not asking to find any internal stresses due to torsion. Uh, we're just asked to find what is the torsional moment. So indicator here is to kind of step back and say, all right, this isn't too difficult. This is pretty straightforward. The nice thing about this is that it doesn't require any codes or any provisions. This one's just like a back of the napkin knockout. So let's show you how to do that. Uh, torsional moment, and for those that don't know, is different than internal moment. If we were to have just your standard beam, or yeah, just any, any type of beam, and it start to deflect like this under some kind of loading, which is my squiggles, uh, you would get internal stresses and you would get internal bending moments, which would look something like that. Um, but for torsion, let's see, I'm going to try to go isometric here for you. On the fly, we have uh, torsional moment that's doing something like this along the length of the entire beam. So it's starting to turn and twist that beam is really what torsion is, is twisting of an element. And if I were to draw a cross section, what's happening is you're getting rotation of the section doing something like that. So that's torsion for those that, you know, the quick and dirty of torsion for those that don't know. Uh, moving forward, we need, so like I said, it's, it's very similar to a moment. So we need a force times a length. And so let's first find our force. So force, we have 20 kips per foot. And you might think, okay, well, there's my force. Well, that's a force per length, per unit length. Um, so we still need to multiply that because that 20 kips is being applied all the way along our beam which means that in order to get a, a sum of forces, we need to multiply by the length of the beam, right? That is going to equal, four, you know, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, not sure if my screen's blocking. That's going to equal 400 kips, right, along the entire length of the beam. Now you just need your length. So you need your eccentricity, basically, um, to create that torsion. Because if you had just a point load, or sorry, if you had a load that's acting right at the web or you know at the center line of your beam then you would have no torsion you just have a you know a gravity load being applied along your beam that would be really easy and you'd be done 
Um, but what you have here above, as shown, you have an eccentricity of 9 inches. And that's just backed, again, along to the center line of your beam. So 9 inches is going to be our length, which generates our torsional effects. Well, 9 inches would give us kip inch or inch kip, to have, depending on how you want to say it. And if we see our answers over here, they're all in foot kip. So we want to convert that inches into feet to make sure that we're in proper units for the answers that are provided to us. So we need to do 9 over 12 to get it into feet, and that's just 0 0.75 feet. And now the last thing is just force times length. I know, it's pretty straightforward. But for those who are unfamiliar with torsion, it might be a nice little, you know, starter pack. That is going to equal 300 foot kips. And right there, that's your answer. So let's go take a look. Let's switch to green, because, you know, green means uh, answer time. And boom, I'd say B. B is going to be your answer. And that's all it takes. So you got to remember, I think this is a good little problem to kind of draw everybody back towards the end of the uh, study period here and say, look, not every problem is going to be impossible. Uh, actually, every problem is supposed to be answerable in six minutes or less, some less than others. And this is a perf perfect example of one. There's plenty that are going to try and trip you up, but there's also plenty in there that are supposed to be quick, easy, straight to the point, and... This is an example of one of them. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Join that team. Ding-a-ling that bell. You know, do what you got to do to join this team right now. I don't care if you're a new engineer, if you're not even an engineer, if you're just starting school, uh, if you're just curious about the engineered world and the built environment around you, this team is for you. Talk to anyone in here. They're having a great time, and we're definitely advancing our knowledge and our abilities. So... This is Richard Kestefa. I'll see everyone next time. Later.